Do you want to take your renderings from something like this to something like this? Well, in this video, I'm going to go through some tips and tricks on how to improve your Fusion 360 renderings. There are three tips that I want to cover in today's video. They are materials, lighting, and environments. I want to create a realistic rendering of this dodeca face mill. The first thing I want to do is to make sure that I pick a material that closely matches what the product is made out of. We'll start by clicking on the appearance icon in the menu. I'm going to use the steel appearance because this product is made out of steel. So under metal, I'll go into steel and then pick steel satin. Then I'll drag and drop it on top of one of the objects. You can see now that it has changed to be a little bit darker. I'll repeat this for the other part. The cutter inserts are made from a titanium nitride coated material. Under metal, you'll notice that we have coatings. And here's that titanium nitride material. So I'm just going to drag this onto one of those cutters. Because the cutter was patterned, you can see how all of them update. That's all I'm going to do for now. We'll come back and modify the material later. So the next tip I want to talk about is the lighting. If we go into the scene settings and go into the environment library, you can see all of the default light environments. Currently, it is using the grid light environment. By dragging a different light environment into the viewport, you can see how it changes. However, you'll notice that all of these lighting environments are kind of bland and gray. I'll cover how to use a special tip to improve the lighting environments in just a minute. But first, I want to talk about a tip that will improve the look of your renders. That is, to use filleted or rounded edges instead of sharp edges. Notice the highlight right here? This is because the edge has a fillet on it. Notice this other edge is sharp and you don't really see any highlights going on with those sharp edges. Another tip is to change the background color. In this example, the part is gray and so is the background. I want to have a little bit of contrast to that. To do that, I can go into my settings and change the background color. By clicking on the color swatch, we can change the color to pure white. This changes the background and makes the product stand out better. But the main tip that really is going to take your renderings to the next level is to use what is called an HDRI, or High Dynamic Range Images. All of the environments in the library are HDRIs, but they don't really have any color or realism. We need to bring in an HDRI, and there is a web page called polyhaven.com that I recommend. Click on Browse HDRIs, and you will see many images, each with four spheres in the foreground, glass, ceramic, metal, and plastic. Notice how the four spheres look different in each image? This is due to the HDRI image that's being reflected off of those different materials. For example, notice how the metal sphere looks significantly different in the cloud image versus the dance floor image. Also notice how the bright parts of the image the lights, for example, really reflect off the shiny plastic and how the light and dark areas of the image really show up in the shiny metal. Depending on which HDRI image you use, you're going to get a different rendering result. So one of the tips with using an HDRI is that I recommend finding an image that is similar to what you're trying to render. For example, 
we're rendering this dodeca face mill which is a machinery type product so I would search for something like a machine shop let's do a search for a machine shop and you'll see that it filters and shows different kinds of workshops take a look at the metal sphere in each of the images and pick which one you like the best I'm gonna pick machine shop 02 because it has some color in it notice how the image looks odd this is because the image is processed in a way that it can wrap all the way around a sphere to create a spherical environment. It's kind of like if you took the map off of a globe and laid it out flat. Once you pick an HDRI that you like, you can download it in the upper right corner. I would recommend leaving the default resolution set to 4K. I really haven't noticed any better renderings by using 8K or 16K, and it really slows down your renderings. Once it's downloaded, we'll go back into Fusion 360 and click on the Replace Custom Environment button. Then we can pick the HDRI we just downloaded. Notice how the model looks completely different now. It also looks pretty dark, so we're going to need to change the brightness. By dragging the brightness slider up, it's looking a little bit more realistic, and you can see how the HDRI is adding some color and some contrast to the model. I also have the ability to change the position of the HDRI. By clicking on the Move icon next to Position, I can rotate the spherical HDRI around which will cast different parts of the HDRI onto the model. Notice as I rotate the HDRI around, some positions look a little bit more realistic than others. And this is what I'm looking for. So, you can see how using an HDRI image already makes our image look so much better. Now there are many different kinds of HDRIs. If we go back to the polyhaven.com webpage, I really liked the look of the dance hall image, so let's try that one also. It's also good to download a few different ones and see how they compare to each other. Notice the dancing hall has less color, but has good contrast between the lights and the darks, which makes the metal look very metallic. Again, I will change the position of the HDRI to see what looks the best. One of the other tips I like to use is to put your item in a realistic environment. For example, if you've modeled a toaster or a coffee maker, put it on a kitchen counter. If you modeled a drill, put it on a workbench. So in this example, I've already created a table which is just a solid or a surface that it's going to be my background that I can apply a material onto. I'll bring up the appearances dialog and do a search for diamond plate. We'll drag that material onto the table to see what it looks like. It looks a little bit too big so I'm going to change the scale to be something smaller like around 48. If I do a quick render, notice how the tool reflects onto the diamond plate? This just adds a little bit more interest than just a plain background. But maybe I don't want even more metal in my scene, as I want the main focus to be on the tool. Let's go back into the appearance. Then under Other, let's open up Ground Plane. We'll drag the measured 10 centimeter black material onto the table. Notice this gives it an interesting environment, but the surface is not reflective, so the focus stays on the tool. Now, I want the metal material we use to be a bit more reflective. Let's go back into appearances, 
right click on the steel satin material, then drag the roughness slider down to zero. Notice how the material looks like a mirror now. The roughness slider adds a bit of diffusion on the material to help break up how the light reflects off of it. I'm going to set the roughness to 0.2, which is a bit more reflective than the default of 0.265. Another tip is to use depth of field. This helps make the viewer focus on the object in the foreground and the background fades out to a blurred image. You see this quite often in photography. I'll start an in-canvas render, then I'll turn on depth of field and make the center of the focus on one of the cutters. Notice the background and even some of the model becomes quite blurry. We need to change the blur down to a much smaller number such as 0.15. Now notice the background is blurry, but the part is in focus. This looks really good. Now that we have our scene set up with our materials, our HDRA lighting, table environment, and camera settings, I'm going to render this as an official render. I have the option to render it either on the cloud or locally on my computer. In this example, I'll do a local render. I want to change the render quality to excellent and then pick what size of a render I want. Typically, I go into the print tab in the render settings and pick the 8.5 by 11 size and then press render. We'll let this finish and see what the final render looks like. So, Here's the final rendering, which as you can see, looks much better than the original plain gray rendering. So remember, materials, HDRIs, and environments take your renderings to the next level.